Hey guys, Spirit 880, and welcome to part three of my DeLorean restoration series, or fixer upper series, or minor repair series on part three. And that's what we're going to do in this series, is we've got some minor repairs and some stuff that I want to get addressed. And um, we're going to run into a nice little issue. Uh, the random no start problem comes back. And it's a little bit more, much more uh, detailed than what I originally was thinking in part two. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to Steven um, at, D at DMC DeLorean Motor Company in Texas. Um, and if he watches this video, I cannot say how much I appreciate y'all for helping me out. Um, you will see further in this video to the audience of what happens with the fuel pump assembly. DeLorean Motor Company in Texas, they got me the parts that I needed uh, immediately, the very next day in the morning, got the DeLorean back up and running with, in, in no time. Uh, and they were really, they, they took care of it. I didn't even have to, it was incredible. So a huge, huge shout out to them. But in this series, we got some stuff we gotta take care of. I wanna get the horns taken care of, the little bouncy speedometer thing which a lot of y'all have talked about. Um, there was something, a little hose that no one noticed out of all the stuff that I did to the car, no one noticed this one hose on the engine pictures and stuff, but we're gonna take care of that. Gonna take care of this issue with the fuel pump and at the end of the video, you will see she is done and ready to go. In fact, I've got some back to the future memorabilia stuff, little props in here for kids. When I drive around, they'll see the little uh, Gray's Almanac, the hoverboard and all that kind of stuff. I need to find a flux capacitor. I just wanna, ha I just wanna have some stuff in the car, just, just for the people who see it, because this thing draws a ton of attention. So without further ado, let's get right to the horns. Time to repair the horns. What's wrong with them? I thought DNC did a full restoration on this thing. Well, they did. Well, didn't they replace the horns? Yep. What's wrong? Dirt daubers. I plugged up both horns. They work, but you can't hear the horns. Now, the detail guy did, guy did everything he could to unplug the horns, and I figured at one point in time I would get in here and, you know, try to take the horns at least see if the horn was serviceable. Okay, there we go. Oh, let's see. There we go. Oh yeah, she's packed solid all the way up to here. Let's see if we can, let me get some compressed air. Stand by. I can't really show it too well, but basically you have one connector that uh, clicks in, horn faces out this way, and then you get a 10 millimeter bolt nut that goes on top of a little, little spin washer. So take me two seconds to get this hooked up. Or not. Y'all gotta see the passenger side. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's nasty. Um, hmm. Okay. How to use the kitchen sink, coat hanger, wire, and just run in the water different directions back and forth. And I've got the passenger side unplugged. This is what I had to do to the driver's side after putting it back on just a few minutes ago in the video and seeing that it didn't make any difference at all. So this should fix it. And I've already tested the driver's side. Driver's side sounds nice and loud. So after doing the horn repair yesterday, we discovered something that needs to be addressed as well. And it's kind of funny because it goes along with one of the problems originally that I had fixed. That was the brake light, the brake indicator light was on after the emergency brake was lowered. Now the original or the pri previous owner had thought that the um, activation switch at the emergency brake handle was faulty. And in fact, it turned out to be that the master cylinder was low. The master cylinder has a little sensor in it for the brake fluid. 
99% of the times, you shouldn't have to add brake fluid to a master cylinder. Now your brake fluid will fluctuate over time depending on the wear on your pads, because obviously the pistons and the calipers are coming out further. But <clears throat> when you compress those pistons back in after a new brake pad change, then that level should come up. But it should not go to the point where your sensor, and which some cars have, will activate, letting you know you have low brake fluid. So I was like, there's gotta be a leak here somewhere because brake fluid kind of theoretically doesn't evaporate. And while I was under the car fixing the horns, this is what I found. So there is the master cylinder for the DeLorean. And if you notice, that rear union, or whatever that's called, needs to be tightened. It's very common if you replace the master cylinder, if you don't tighten those exactly right, those will start to drip. <clears throat> and I believe that's what was happening on this one is it was starting to drip under pressure. Very simple and easy fix. Just kind of either snug it back up or loosen it and tighten it back up and it should be good to go. There is a panel that you can remove right here that will easily give you access to the master cylinder. And as you can see, it's wet right there very simple and easy fix so we're just going to tighten it up real quick got everything taken care of very 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 simple and easy fix 7 16 i loosened this just a hair and then i tightened it back down and i got probably another quarter of a turn maybe a little bit more and that's secured i used some solvent some cleaner to clean off any goo that's on the bottom of this there was a dirt dauber's nest right on top of here as well all that's cleaned up while we had this open clean that up as well in just a minute i'm gonna clean that up while I have this open, and that's it. We should be good to go. Everything nice and clean. And ta-da, that's it. Perfect. Oh yeah, how cool is that? <laughs> I forgot one more thing. All right, we need to put this right back here. Perfect. Oh, that looks cool. I just have this feeling. I have this feeling there is something special in the mailbox for the DeLorean. This is more of a precautionary repair. But David McKean um, is well known in the DeLorean arena, you would call it. And he makes solid state relays and electronics for the DeLorean. And this is a solid state fuel RPM relay. So in part two, we fixed the, the issue with the starting every once in a while where the DeLorean would not start and we found out it was the fuel pump connector on top of the tank where the new fuel pump assembly was put in from DeLorean Motor Company in Texas. But one thing that we know, that I noticed and I also showed you in that video is the fuel pump or the fuel RPM relay. And I'm pretty sure, I'm without a doubt, I know for a fact that was replaced when the car was restored back in 2012, 2013 but it was replaced with a relay that still has 1980s technology. It still features an actual relay and can be prone to cold solder joints. I actually did find one or two on that board during part two and resoldered it back. David offers a fully sol solid state relay. I'll show you a picture here of from what is on his website. It's about 85 bucks. Gonna get this old relay out of here. And again, that is the one we're after. So all we gotta do, it was almost impossible. I try to do that on camera. There we go. And there you have it. Solid state relay is back in place. We can put the relay board back where it's supposed to go. Okay, put the 
carpet back down, and that's it. We're ready to go. All right, ready? Perfect. Very nice. Now, one of the last things I wanted to get taken care of on my DeLorean is the bouncy speedometer a lot of you viewers had pointed out. This actually goes back to a faulty speedometer cable, but if you go back to the previous owner when he had listed the DeLorean for sale, one of the things he said that was wrong with it is they bypassed the Lambda counter. So the best way how to explain this is, this is the Lambda counter. This is your lower speedometer cable and your upper speedometer cable. And this basically counts every 30,000 miles to let you know when it's time to service the car. And I think it has something to do with an O2 sensor as well. The previous owner said the speedometer had stopped working one day and he had suspected that this box had gone bad. And so instead of replacing this box, which this box wasn't available at the time, if I'm correct, he got a aftermarket one piece extra long speedometer cable. And as you can see with the speedometer bouncing, um, those cables don't last very long. And I actually checked the Lambda counter box and it actually works. And these upper and lower speedometer cables were replaced back in 2012, 2013, when the car was fully restored. And I've checked these cables and they're still like brand new. So what I did off camera is in order to get to the speedometer cable, you've got to take um, six washers and nuts. They're seven millimeters. They're underneath the dash. There's no way to film it. You've literally got to take some of the air conditioning duct out. Um, it's very, very confined up in there. And you basically remove this binnacle. It comes off in one piece. You have to unplug some connectors and stuff. And then you can access the upper speedometer cable. The reason for this is this upper speedometer cable uh, has a very, very low failure rate. So I've got everything put back to normal. I haven't had a chance to reconnect a new cable up to the, the um, to the angle drive yet, which the speedometer on the DeLorean gets its reading off an angle drive on the front driver's side wheel. It's kind of neat. And there's the old speedometer cable right there. Um, but I've already tested it just by spinning it, and it's very, very smooth. Plus, I greased the uh, the cables before putting them back in place. Let's go check it out and see if it's fixed my bouncy speedometer. I'll get to show y'all a nice cold start as well. Let's see how this works. Here's the fuel pump. Wow, perfect. All right, let's see what happens. Here. Now before, if I ever move just slightly, the speedometer would bounce really up to the like 35 and zero. And I can already tell you, it's, it's not bouncing anymore. Look at that. It's, change gears hmm. it's still just a tiny I mean the slightest bounce that's that's nothing compared to what it was doing before that's a million times better than what it was before so basically it bounces just a little bit at the very, very, very low speeds, like five, 10, 15 miles an hour. But now it's correct on the rest of the uh, the, the speed range. That's, that's cool. That repair was a huge deal and I'll explain why. The Lamba counter itself is like $140, $150. Speedometer cables up and lower, I think are around $100. Or if you went the other other way, getting the extended speedometer cable, I think that's like 69 or 70 bucks plus shipping at DeLorean Go. I fixed this for $0 by getting my old Lambda counter out, checking it out. And the reason why I went with the back with the old upper and lower speedometer cable is when this thing was restored back in 2012, 2013, they were replaced. They were brand new. 
there's probably less than a thousand miles that's been put on this since the restoration. I don't, the, the angle drive and also the little sensor on the wheel when you put your rim on, um, and if, if it sits for a long time can cause those items to basically bind up or whatever and allow the speedometer system not to work. And that's, I don't know why the previous owner went that route, but checking everything out, putting everything back together, it works perfectly fine now with everything back to the factory specs. That's incredible. I really, really like that. Well, folks, we have a major, major, major problem. The no start is back on the DeLorean. This random no start and all the troubleshooting leads it right back up to the fuel pump. No matter what I do, no matter what connections I wiggle or do anything, it will not start. So unfortunately, um, I'm gonna have to take the fuel pump assembly out of the tank. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do some of this off camera. So off camera, I removed the fuel pump assembly and let me show you what I found. The positive wire going down to the fuel pump is melted right here really bad. The ground wire is melted even worse. Now I tried to see if there was any attempt in trying to repair it. And I put some shrink wrap or shrink um, protective on the ground wire, but this plug is melted really, really bad. Then the plug that that plugs into was melted really bad. In fact, it melted so much that this is the ground pin right here, that top pin that's pushed in, that is the ground pin. So I sent an email out to Steven at DeLorean Motor Company. Remember, he is the, uh, he is the CEO of DeLorean Motor Company. And very nicely, I just showed him what I found over there. And within a minute or two, immediately he emailed me back um, acknowledging everything that I had found with the wiring. So basically, what, did it, what we've talked to um, and what we figured out is some point in time, back on part two, where the plug plugging into the fuel pump assembly from the uh, junction box there under the hood, um, with that plug not being secured all the way in, we believe that because of the ampage that the fuel pump draws, over time, heated up that connector that you just saw and that pen dropping or raising, not making contact with the ground, then shorting out the wires, um, causing havoc. I will give DeLorean Motor Company a huge, huge, huge shout out. They were incredible. Uh, overnighted me the parts I just had UPS leave. I've got a box over here with a new wire hardness and everything. And now for sure, we will correctly get this thing repaired. This is the this is the important piece right here. Now, the question is, how easy is it to get the fuel sitting unit out of there? Let me look at this real quick here. Whew. Okay. Oh wow, look at the uh, look at the pens for the fuel pump. <clears throat> look at that. The pens are much larger now for the positive and negative. That's cool. Okay, cool. Okay. 
Okay. So, we want everything facing this direction right here. And we want that right there. Temporary thing. Let's set that right there for now. All right. So blue is going to be this line right here, which is my feet, and green is going to be my return line. We're gonna spin the fuel pump just a hair. That's why I didn't tighten this down all the way. Or not all the way, but it's fine, I'm gonna wrestle for you. There we go, right there. Let's make sure. Okay. Huh, look at that. It's because I put that new O ring in there. Um, hmm, hold on. Now, they did supply me with a new connector, but I didn't. Huh. All right, so I guess we're going to change out the connector then. I wasn't expecting to do that, but that does secure in there and a lot better than the other one. Huh. Okay, well, let's do it. Instead of splicing this, I'm going to try something. It may or may not work, I don't know. But, let's see. I think it will work though. Good. That worked out really well. Okay, now we can put the new plug. See what we can do now. Lock right in the place. Cool. All right. Yep, that ain't going nowhere. All right, very good. We're good to go. What I want to see is number one is a fuel pump run. Number two. What does our fuel gauge look like? So let's do that first. I heard the fuel pump pump up. Let's do that one more time. Fuel pump is working. All right, let's see if we got any leaks. And a fuel gauge. What is the fuel gauge? Looks like. Okay, fuel gauge is coming up. Yeah. It was right at the three quarters mark, so that's working correctly. No leaks. Let's come over here. Make sure the connector's cool. 
Munchies. And we're good to go. Let's uh, let shut it off for a minute or so and then try recranking it and make sure the fuel pressure is still good and it cranks right up. While we're waiting for the DeLorean just to chill out for a minute or two, um, to do a restart to see to make sure the pressure is still there on the uh, fuel pressure. I did get another box from DeLorean from the Midwest. And what could it be? This is extremely heavy. Oh, right. And what in the world is this hose? Now, I cannot believe no one noticed this hose in any of the videos. But we'll get to that here in just a minute. But most importantly, what is in this package? Well, it's quite expensive. It's been something I wanted to add to the DeLorean. Ta-da! That is cool. That is really cool. Stainless steel shifting ball. <laughs> Very heavy too, by the way. All right, before we get to that, Let's get this hose installed. Again, I can't believe no one noticed that. What hose are you talking about? This hose right here. It was funny, I was looking at my detail pictures and I was like, what in the world? What? And then, of course, this was the idea of trying to fix it. Let's, uh, let me open this up real quick and then we'll put the hose back on and this will be done. Should be fairly simple to get installed. Should be, I say. Um, yeah. There we go. And then we just put this here. That's it. That was easy. Let's try this. What was I looking for? Oh, um, no leaks. You see any leaks? I don't see any leaks. And then it should fire right back up with no hesitation or anything. Just like that. Perfect. use painter's tape and a glove to get that sucker off <laughs> all right go bring me the other one Ta -da. oh shoot it did have a screw whoops hmm. not not screw So much better. Hmm. Much, much better. Oh my gosh, I like that. That's cool. Very cool. Let's just check the starting thing one more time. Make sure we're in neutral. Yep, we're in neutral and bam, it should go right off. Perfect. in gear and that is it folks we are done so guys and girls thanks again for watching my videos this was uh man that fuel pump was kind of unexpected but it's fixed right now it's done correctly she runs perfect love the shifter ball the horns all that stuff um thanks again for subscribing to my channel i can't thank the audience enough uh it's been incredible and it's pouring down rain now click subscribe or like around here and we will see you soon